am I now? Rise and shine, Angel Face. Is, is this New York? Oh, Christ alive. Don't tell me you damaged your brain in that fire, too. What are you talking about? Fire? Yes, fire. When you and Bob opened up the gates of hell for your last game break, you dumbasses done burned up the whole first floor of the studio. I dragged your sorry ass out of there just in time. But not before you suffered some serious burns. Luckily for you, I'm as good at plastic surgery as I am at shotgun and beer cans. Do you have any idea how hard it is to replace the cheeks on your face with the cheeks from your ass? It's harder than Chris Savino at a staff party, let me tell you. You, you saved me? Why? <laughs> well, that depends. Is Germany a prime example of how strong nationalism and a lack thereof are both equally dangerous to a civilization's social cohesion and long-term sustainability? What? Exactly. Don't ask questions and take a look at your new look. Tell it slow, but your story is loud now. Sure, it's one of way to love you see. Shout out loud, but if they don't hear well, maybe they'll listen to me. Oh, right. <laughs> the fire. Think I'll have to lay low for a little while. Well, if you can't bring the monkey to the show, you gotta bring the show to the monkey. And what better place than an unknown bar in Sussex County where no one knows that you're an unemployed talk show host who's probably wanted for arson at this point. Uh, well, Brad Roche is here to say bottoms up until my face stops hurting. First on our agenda, let's see what's inside the Tomb Crate. For those of you who remember Failing Upward, the first storyboards for the tune are being completed shortly, and if they're ever uploaded, a link for that will be put in the description of this video. It really gives you a better feel for how the final product will look. And God, something about these faces just cracks me up. Uh, I don't really have anything to say about Tomb Crate specifically until the studio is back in order, so let's talk about some interesting news. I've noticed that Western animation companies made a few bold moves towards streaming services this month. Cartoon Network released the new season of Steven Universe on their CN app, first before airing the episodes on television, which means they're really starting to prioritize web distribution. If they're starting to put new episodes online first before putting them on TV, this could be the next nail in the coffin for television animation. And it may foreshadow a huge change in the way that we're expected to consume network-funded Western cartoons. Additionally, a fast-growing streaming service called Verve has added an exclusive dub show to their lineup, Dofus Treasures of Karub. I love this show during its original run in the French language, and for some pretty obvious reasons. The plot and the art style. I like the plot and the art style, you pervs! I mean, if you keep that up, I'll have to start watching my drink more carefully around you guys. Jeez. Anywho, I'm not a fan of the Verve streaming app, since it's still limited to the US and most of the shows are available on more popular and well-rounded streaming services. But, the fact that Verve added Dofus into the mix makes me interested. It's a fantastic show that's all about adventure, relationships, combat, and how time takes a toll on your pitiful existence. If you're not into it after the first episode, then you will be by later episodes. Oh yeah, you will be. Okay, okay, so maybe I got sidetracked that time, uh, and probably the last time too. Okay, 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 so I like this show for a little more than the story and art style, but hey, it's based on a video game, which is pretty cool. You know what else is pretty cool? Pixel art, which is our topic for the day. Pixel art has always intrigued me, since it forces artists to work within very tight limits. How can you make a distinct character using only a certain number of squares? Any way you can, that's the answer. Now, with the introduction of 3D gaming, pixel-based art styles seem to die out for a while there. But it's come back with a vengeance this decade. So let's talk a bit about that while we meet our esteemed guest, Greta. Greta. Her, her name's Greta. My name is Greta. Yeah, I just said Also that. known as Greta Lynn. 
I am a 24-year-old self-taught artist with a full-time job as a receptionist. I love Legend of Zelda and Indiana Jones. And I'm secretly an elf, but my friends will tell you I'm a hobbit. Don't believe them. A nerdy receptionist elf thing who makes art? Well, what got you into making art? I've been drawing since I was very small. I can remember the days I would come home from school and just sit in my little table and draw tons of stick figure comics and stories. I don't remember what exactly got me started drawing in the first place. It could have been influence from cartoons, maybe some of my family members who were also artists, or maybe just something I decided to do on my own. But once I started, I never really stopped. I would draw constantly and went from stick figures to more anime-esque styles and drawings. Then I was introduced to Invader Zim and that sort of opened my eyes and helped me realize that there are really all kinds of different art styles and I could totally find what fits me best. Then it just went on from there to what you see today. <laughs> you know, I can kind of see that Invader Zim and anime influence you're talking about. It makes for an interesting mix. So, uh, I've noticed that you actually make pixel art characters now and then. How do you go about doing that? Okay, so I'm sure my method of pixels and animations aren't the best, but as a beginner, I found it was a decent and somewhat easy way to create and animate, especially when I'm not at home with my laptop and tablet. I, what I usually do is I usually just create the pixel drawing using this one website called pic.codius.net, which a friend introduced me to. I love Pic because it gives you lots of options and tools that make creating pixel art much easier, in my opinion. I create the base drawing in Pic and save it. Then I open it in MS Paint and start making the frames which in reality is just moving part of the image by a pixel or two each time before saving it as a new frame. Very simple for small animations like blinking, winking, bouncing, etc. After the frames are done, I either open up the files in Photoshop or if I'm not at home, go to one of those websites where you can combine the frames. My favorite site to go to is azima.com and the best part about it is that it not only lets you combine these frames, but it also lets you make the background transparent for any of those who would like to have the small pixels on their pages. I am in no way a pro at creating pixel art and pixel animations, but I'm still learning and will continue to do so. And it's just something that I love doing in addition to drawing. It's hard work and it can be very tedious, but also in a way rewarding because of how tedious pixel art can be in comparison to other just normal art styles. Whoa, that is really cool, dude. Great for folks who just want to jump right into this without having to do a lot of work or forethought or extra learning. Believe it or not, the process for the quote unquote pros isn't all that different. A lot of them work in a program like Photoshop and just reduce the screen resolution to make pixels more prominent. I know a couple of good tutorials that'll teach you just that, and I'll put them in the description. Okay, so I'm always interested in what kinds of cartoons inspire creative people like you. I know you mentioned Invader Zim and anime, but are there any other shows that influence your work? It's not entirely fair to pick just one particular cartoon as a favorite. There's just so many out there, from shows on Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon to small animation projects that people create that and they themselves become series. Though, if I had to choose one show that holds a place in my heart, it would have to have been the late 80s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. I don't have an excuse for that. I've just always been a Ninja Turtles fan and love the snarky comments and the really bad jokes from there. <laughs> I can't blame you. I still have the VHS tapes from that era. Where can people find you if they want to see your stuff or get in touch? You can find me on DeviantArt, Tumblr, or Facebook. You can also email me at gretalyn at gmail.com. I don't have a Twitter or Instagram yet, but I do plan on making them in the future. I've also created a Patreon that will have exclusive works in progress and certain projects made just for Patreon supporters. There's also my Redbubble where you can buy some of my artwork on t-shirts and bags and etc. 
Awesome. Well, it was great having you on the show, Greta. Greta. Yeah. Let's get real, Banana Peel. Nothing says versatility like an artist who tries something new. From soft gradients to hard pixels, you've got some serious variety going on. And pooling double duty as a receptionist to pay the bills shows ambition and responsibility. I hope your decent online following continues to grow, and I really hope to see more from you in the future. Also, you're just freaking adorable. I mean, just look at that face. Ah, get out of here before you make my heart explode. Speaking of exploding bodily organs, I say it's time we get into our underrated tale. Unless you were a young adult in 2008 or a weeb who watches Legend of Black Heaven AMVs, you probably haven't heard of Code Monkeys. I was obsessed with this show during my teen years, and I think you can guess why. Yep, right there. This show follows a set of pixelated characters who make video games for a living. Video game characters who make video game characters. What a concept. It's filled with crude and rude adult humor, but maintains the classic video game aesthetic through the entirety of the show. It was killed after just one year of airing new episodes on the G4 channel and hasn't been seen since. That is until this year when a tweet from the creator, Adam de la Peña, linked us to his website. It's, it's just a still image of the in-show company called Game of Vision. That, 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 that's all it is. Supposedly it's hinting at a continuation of the show or something, so I inspected the website's source code for clues. And nothing. So, Adam just used a WYSIWYG CMS to throw a picture online. Which means the original code monkey didn't even code his own website. <laughs> what a missed opportunity. But we don't miss these opportunities on Listen to the Monkey, so here's an opportunity to see something with a little more elaborate art style. Check out Paul Robertson. He's one of the greatest pixel artists of our time. The dude's made some stuff for Adult Swim. Uh, Scott Pilgrim, the video game. A whole bunch of stuff, really. He's, he's, he's great. You're all great. Everything's great. The only thing that'd be greater is me hiding an Emma Stone's birthday cake along with this week's monkey moment in history. See ya.